Good afternoon. Today we're going to go over some of the basic calibration steps for the Model 901 Oxygen Analyzer, typically used for headspace applications such as food packaging, but there are quite a number of uses for the instrument. And today we're going to go over the basics of how to calibrate and ensure its operability. The most important concept to understand is that the Model 901 operates in a linear fashion. In other words, the sensor is linear if it is calibrated to two points, the zero point and to ambient air, which is always 20.95%. Now, if you were to change elevation, uh, you'll see a different reading on the instrument. Uh, that's not because there's a different concentration of oxygen, it's simply that there are less oxygen molecules overall at different elevations. And we're going to go through how to adjust the instrument for that and some basic validation steps. So this first chart that I'm going to show you is the concentration of oxygen, or rather the reading that the instrument will show at different elevations. Quantex facility is at 500 feet above sea level, and we calibrate the instrument at our facility to 20.95%. Now, if you were to take the instrument, say, to Denver, uh, it may read significantly lower. Uh, these are just rough calculations uh, that I did really quickly, so I'm not sure if they're exactly on the money, but you get the idea. Um, the percentage that it will show on the screen at different elevations uh, will generally be lower, although as you get closer to sea level, it could be a little bit higher. Um, this can all be calculated by uh, calculating the air pressure at different elevations and using uh, that number uh, multiplied by 20.95 uh, to get the different concentrations at different elevations. We can also pre-calibrate your instrument for your elevation if we know it ahead of time. Uh, so if you are in Denver and we're shipping the instrument to Denver, uh, we can reverse this calculation so that when you power the instrument on, it reads correctly. So the first step is we're going to power the instrument on, and you're going to notice something when it powers on. It reads 20.0. This is normal as the sensor will consume a tiny amount of the oxygen that is uh, in the sensor, and when the instrument is left idle, whether it's on or off, that reading will drift down. So the first thing we're going to do is press the pump button and make sure before we do any adjustments, before we do any adjustments, we're going to make sure that there is a fresh sample in the instrument. Uh, now this instrument was just uh, handed to me. I have no idea if it's actually been calibrated, uh, but no worries. Uh, we'll be able to calibrate it here and demonstrate it for you. So as you can see, the reading is stabilized at 20.4. So this needs to be adjusted. By using the supplied screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, we're going to adjust the span, the O2 span, and we're going to adjust it clockwise. Up to 20.9. On the side of the instrument, we have a span adjustment we have a zero adjustment, excuse me, and we have a pump time adjustment. Clockwise on the span, we'll move it up, and you'll want to make sure that you're adjusting the span and not the zero. Uh, so now we're at 20.9%, and what we have done is we have validated this point on the curve. So you may be asking yourself, how do we validate the zero? Let's check that. Okay, so to check the zero point, we're actually going to use 5% carbon dioxide 95% nitrogen. Um, you can use any zero gas really, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, typically we use pure nitrogen, uh, but the CO2 will not interfere with the reading at all, and uh, we can use this to zero the instrument just as well uh, as any other zero gas. So the next thing we're going to do is affix the orange lure hub needle with the tube and the long tube, which we call the calibration tube, onto the end of the probe. And we're going to put the calibration tube in as far as we can. Excuse me. As far as we can into uh, the larger tube where gas is flowing out of. Um, 
This is really best practice to ensure that we don't get uh, ambient air leaking in while we're conducting the zero process. Also, this is a better way to calibrate instruments that have a CO2 sensor. Uh, we could connect the cylinder uh, directly to the end of the sample probe, uh, but I kind of like to do it this way because uh, we can verify also that the pump is drawing in enough sample. So let's turn on the gas and we're going to get the gas flowing. There we go. Make sure the gas is flowing out of there. And you probably can't hear it, but there is a little bit of a hiss. And so after gas has been flowing through this tube for a few seconds, we're going to press the pump button now. And again, this instrument was just handed to me. This instrument was just handed to me, and I'm not sure exactly uh, what the calibration state of it is. So let's see how low the reading goes. Uh, the zero range is approximately negative 0.6 to positive 0.4. And the, reading why we, the reason why we have the zero adjustment is because the sensor uh, can drift at the zero point over time. Um, it shouldn't drift more than 0.1% per year. Um, but having this zero adjustment will ensure that we're able to uh, properly nail down the first point on our calibration uh, curve. So we ended up at negative 0.3. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the zero adjuster. Clockwise. And this does take a few turns, so I've probably turned it six or seven revolutions. And the way we set it at the factory is we actually set this to 0 0.1. Uh, the reason for that is because if it does drift a little bit, uh, that way it won't go negative. So as soon as it hits 0.1, we declare that to be zeroed. Uh, users can be a little... Uh, confused or distraught if they ever see a negative number, but this is an analog instrument, so it is possible to see a negative number. Now, we've just adjusted the zero point on the curve, so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the probe from the gas, and we're actually going to press the pump button again. And what we're going to do now is actually adjust the span because any adjustment that you make to the zero will affect the span. I would expect that this would end up a little bit higher since we moved the zero point up. Uh, I would expect that the 20.9 will end up a little bit higher and it, indeed it did. We're often asked, how often should we check the O2 span? We have some customers that check it at the beginning of every day or every shift. We have some customers that check it once a month. Certainly, you should make this adjustment if you change elevation. Um, but uh, it's really not necessary uh, to do more than, say, once a month. Uh, changes, Large changes in temperature or humidity uh, might throw this number off by about 0.1. Um, which is statistically insignificant, especially when sampling a low level of oxygen. So now we're going to turn the span counterclockwise and adjust it back down to 20.9%. Okay, and the last item I'm going to demonstrate is not really a calibration item per se, uh, but it's a frequent uh, troubleshooting issue that we'll run into uh, where the, the sample probe is not uh, screwed in tightly at the inlet fitting and if that were backed off a few threads as I'm going to do now and I'll demonstrate if that's backed off a few threads what you can see if that's not tight is we have the zero gas flowing and if we press the pump button let's see where it ends up So as you can see in this instance, while we have the zero gas uh, flowing through the tube and we're drawing uh, from the zero gas, 
because the threads were backed off a little bit on this probe, on the hex fitting on this probe, we ended up with a reading of 0.6. So when the pump is drawing in sample, uh, ambient air is getting in through these threads. So we're going to tighten up the threads here a little bit more. And we're going to press the pump button again, and hopefully we should end up at point one. In this case, we're off by a hair, but uh, 0, 0.0. Uh, so that's the basics of calibration. Again, if you change elevation radically, uh, you should definitely recalibrate the span um, and as you can see in this instance the zero did end off up off a little bit sometimes we like to go back and forth between the span and the zero uh, just to ensure that they consistently end up at the same number in this case because I adjusted the span down that did affect the zero uh, typically, if you go back and forth from the span to the zero uh, twice, uh, that's enough to calibrate it. And for the final test, what we're going to do is press the pump button. And we should end up at 20.9%. But again, the sensor has an accuracy of plus or minus point. A plus or minus 1% of concentration, which means that if it starts at 20.7, 20.8, 20.9, 21, uh, this is going to be statistically insignificant uh, once you test a package that has, say, less than 3% oxygen in it. Uh, so that's the basics of calibration. We'll go over some advanced features in the next video, as this is already running about 12 minutes long. Uh, thank you very much.